So we've known for a long time that the metrics that are used to measure the vitality of the Jewish community are flawed. They definitely measure something, but not everything. So things like how many people light Shabbat candles or are members of synagogues or give to federation to measure something. But I was convinced as I did research for Jewish megatrends that people who are already contributing vitally to Jewish life and to a Jewish future probably would score near zero on the conventional metrics. Um, when I talk about the idea of covenantal community, which is to describe a certain character of community that has depth, integrity, passion, accountability, and reciprocity, all those elements of covenantal community as they defined it last night, uh, having worked really hard to create such a community, founded a synagogue in Bethesda, Dat Shalom, uh, I find that the measurements of whether we're doing that well or not are, as I said, not aligned at all with the conventional metrics. So I put out three examples, I can give you more, of what the measurements were. And, and three things that I've noticed in that community that I helped create is how many people are changing their jobs. Why is that happening? Because somehow the community has articulated a notion of sacred purpose, which have inspired people. And when they take a step back and say, whoa, I spend 40, 50, 60 hours a week doing something which has no value ultimately in, for my life or for the people who come after me or for the communities I love, I'm gonna find another way to spend my time. That's one. A second measure is how many people show up to a Shiva minion when they don't know the mourner. Because there's a notion that in this community we wanna support each other even though we've gotten too big to know everyone. You know, when we were 50 families, 100 families, we knew it. Now we're a 500 household community. But I go to Shiva Minyanim on a regular basis, and I look around, and I know that half those people don't know the mourner, but they're there because of a sense of obligation, which is so rare in American society. And the third measurement, I like to say, is that uh, as robust as the programming is at Adat Shalom, there is an equal, if not greater, amount of underground spiritual programming. People simply inviting other people in the community to their home for Shabbat dinner, for Havdalah, for a book club, for a women's support group, for a men's spirituality group, you name it. Uh, and by the way, that models, in many ways, the ministries that have been the bread and butter of megachurches. Megachurches have understood that where people live is not in the liturgy or in the creed or in the dogma. They live in the fact that my child is addicted to drugs. My mother is dying. Uh, I don't have any friends. Uh, I'm about to be unemployed. You know, that's where people live. And when you bring people together in those kind of groups, that's what makes the faith, the religion, come alive because they're talking about you know, what keeps them up at night and what really motivates them. And if that can be done in the context of a faith community, or what I now are calling a spiritual community, that's what it's all about.